That's a lot of ear. That's multitudinous gigantuan ears. All right, this week we're doing repeat because I pick these completely at random or arbitrarily. No one can control me. No one can trust me. Don't turn your back on me. Hello again, friend. <laughs> I don't know what that intro is. Welcome back to the beginning. Do you remember anything? The events that happened before. The tragedies that will inevitably repeat themselves. Oh. I... I couldn't bring back your memories. Just like last time. Uh, don't worry. My memories are a bit scattered too. Things will be better this time around. I'm sure of it. Just be yourself and you'll do fine. Well, it's time for us to depart. But before we go, uh, can I tell you something? I've said this many times before, but I want to tell you again. I... I'm sorry I couldn't save you. Day one, begin again. So this is it, huh? That is a lot of unbroken brick in the middle. The city noise echoed around me as I arrived to my destination. I've never been to this side of town before, but it looks like I'll have to get used to living here. Gerania Acta act Activity? Gerania Academy. A fancy school with a month-long summer program for gifted students. I was a gifted student? It didn't work out. <laughs> I'm going... <laughs> I'm going to be spending the next four weeks here, despite quite fitting, uh, despite not quite fitting the gifted criteria. <laughs> Sounds like the opposite of good. I gotta turn this down. Sorry. There we go. On my end, I was getting brain jammed by how loud the sounds got. <laughs> this sounded like the opposite of a good time. I'd rather be back home sleeping my summer away, if I'm being honest. But my parents wanted me to out of the house. Jeez, what a drag. The weather was certainly agreeing with me. It looked as though it might rain any minute. I'd better hurry up and get outside. Get inside. I doubt strolling in late would leave a good first impression. As I approached the front doors, the air suddenly turned frigid. Uh huh? Huh? What? Not that way. A cold shiver crawled down my spine. What the hell was that just now? Wait, what? Oh crap, the door is locked. What am I going to do? The teachers are going to rip me a new one if I'm, if I'm actually late. I tried slamming the doors to get someone's attention, but nobody was there to hear me. Ugh. This day couldn't get any worse. And rain. Well, shit. I'm getting soaked. I tried banging on the glass again. Hello? Is anybody there? Open the door. Uh, hey there. Is everything alright? Suddenly a shadow passed over my head. And the rain stopped pelting me. It's a Lombax! A short boy came up behind me, nervously gripping an umbrella. He looked around my age, and very short. Another student, maybe? Uh, yeah, I, I'm fine. But the door is locked and nobody's around. I think I'm missing the orientation, too. What a coincidence. I got locked out from the side entrance, too. W well, actually, I kind of broke the door handle on accident. I... I think we'll have a better chance getting inside if we tried the back entrance instead. You want to go together? Sounds better than standing around clueless. Thanks, man. You're a real lifesaver. I'm happy to help. The name's Philip, by the way. What's yours? Do we have a default? Oh. Yuka? Yuka. I think. Mmm. I'm gonna preempt. Boo 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 boo. 
Fuck it. Let's just do Meryl this time. I'm gonna preempt an entire episode where I potentially mispronounce it the whole time and then everyone talks about it. <laughs> Meryl, huh? Nice to meet you. I'm kind of glad someone else is stuck in this miserable weather with me. It's better than being miserable alone, at the very least. Wow. Thanks. Would you rather I leave you here? Well, uh... Great. Let's get going. As we made our way around the building, I stuck close under Philip's umbrella. I was glad for his good timing. The idea of trotting around campus my first day soaked to the bone was not pleasant. Awkward silence hung between us, and we walked closely around the building. Philip fumbled with his umbrella, glancing at me periodically. Uh, by the way, Mara, what subject are you studying here? What do you mean? You mean you forgot? Did you do all that paperwork half asleep or something? Uh, well... Hey, no worries. You're not the only one. I pulled an all-nighter myself, and... Finished at last minute. <laughs> Sound like he was only bringing this up because he couldn't think of anything else to talk about. It's a bit weird that we can only choose one subject to study here. Maybe they go really in depth? It'd suck if you got into a subject you didn't really care about, though. Oh, I remember something like this. I think I signed up for photography or something. Wow, I really did finish that paperwork half asleep. Way to go, Mero. Procrastination hero of future generations. Photography, huh? It's a pretty interesting choice. I scratched my head awkwardly. I'm pretty sure I only chose it because it sounded like an easy course. Hey, there's no shame in being lazy. You don't have to say it quite like that. Though I'm happy to admit I'm a proud couch potato. It's all about finding a good balance, really. I've adopted the sleep is for the week and coffee is my lifeline strategy myself, also known as death. <laughs> that doesn't sound very healthy. Yeah, you're probably right. But work helps keep my mind busy and away from the bad thoughts, you know? And what better way to deal with stress than keeping yourself busy? I think that might be the cause of stress in many cases, Mr. Lombax. Uh, God, I do remember, though. I used to be able to function... I don't know how, but throughout college I had like four hours of sleep a night a lot of the time. And that was with me having to commute to and from a, ta a city that's like an hour away for said classes. And having to deal with potential traffic. I, I used to leave late just to dodge traffic, so I'd be there so long sometimes. Just kind of like borderline lived at college while sleeping as little as possible, trying to simultaneously keep playing World of Warcraft while also working a retail job uh, and getting a geology degree and eventually starting a YouTube channel at the same period of time. And then at some point in there doing, you know, the college and so on. <laughs> Don't recommend actually, kind of bad for you, all those things. I just take a nap. Sleeping your problems away is always an option. You you took a completely healthy comment and and you phrased it as unhealthily as possible to make it sound like sleeping is like an addiction you have. Sleep? What's that? Never heard of it. Dude, maybe that's why you look so stressed and tired. Your body needs rest and all that good jazz. Me? Tired. That's nonsense. I got an entire hour of sleep last night. And I had like three cups of coffee this morning. I feel great. See, this is exactly what I'm talking about. You need, to, you need sleep to live. I get what you're saying. Whenever I close my eyes, my brain wanders to some unpleasant places. And I think... I think I'd rather be tired than go to those places. Y'all met 30 seconds ago. <laughs> just diving straight into life advice and talking about your demons and you're like I, are we just walking around a building real quick after having just exchanged names these people are extreme I kind of envy you to be honest I've known you for 20 seconds and I already want your life instead napping whenever you'd like sounds great 
Worst comes to worst, you can just have someone knock you out with a brick. Uh... I don't think that's effective bed rest, Mr. Marrow. And... <laughs> I haven't heard this, like, on-the-nose comedy beat music since, like, Deadly Premonition. That doesn't sound like valid medical advice. Is that what you do? That explains a few things. Hey, I can fall asleep on my own just fine. Oh, give me your superpower. Anyway, let's just hurry up and move. I'm getting soaked. <laughs> that music. It sounds like a halfway point between Life is Beautiful by, from Lily Permanition and the Chocobo theme. Uh, after a short walk, the two of us arrived at the school's back entrance. It's a metaphor for the game being gay. Oh, look! I, I think there's someone already here. I glanced out from under Philip's umbrella. There was some weird buff guy struggling to climb the side of the building's walls. The walls? A burglar? No, I think it's a student. If he's a burglar, he's a pretty bad one. What are you going to steal from a school? Notoriously underfunded and undersupplied places. As we approached, the weird guy spotted us and grinned before taking a great acrobatic leap and landing in front of us. And then promptly slipped and toppled onto Philip. Ah! He's dead. Holy pecs, Batman. <laughs> Just bursting out. This is functionally identical not wearing a shirt as far as going to school goes. Uh, whoops. Sorry there, little guy. You were right. I'm still in one piece, I think. Which means that I've been around for 25 seasons. That's a relief. Where... Were, uh, were you cuties locked out, too? Cuties? <gasps> Is this a romance fan? Amazing. He's flirting horribly, and he hasn't even introduced himself yet. I don't know about horribly. I mean, it would work on me. Hey now, I was trying to make you all feel welcome. My name is materialized before I've introduced myself. Anyway, the name's Owen. Owen Lorelei. A student at Gerania. Just like you just like you guys. The background? <laughs> Pleasure to meet you. It's always a it's always nice to meet a bunch of new of uh, new folks. You guys from around here? I'd be happy to show you guys around for a good time. Tilda. That's not Tilda. Tilda's little Nash. What's that thing called? Whatever. We do have two eyes. What a revelation. Okay, so that was us in the other vision telling us not to do the other route, right? Because we're stuck in like a time loop and it's like, don't go that way or something. He is very colorful, isn't he? I'm leaving. Wait, don't go. I need your umbrella. The music has instructed me this is a funny scene. Uh, hey now, what about me? Don't just ignore a guy when he's trying to open up to you. Listen, we've had enough opening up today. Everyone's just like talking about their demons and all their life problems. And I'm just trying to walk in my own school building and I haven't made it in yet. I prefer it if you keep it closed, thanks. Ow. Guess there's only room for one oversharer in this ensemble. Let it be known that you've murdered the great Owen Lorelei's self-esteem within 10 seconds of meeting him. Tragic. Philip suddenly glanced back at the other guy from, with a frown. Lorelei? As in that shady and rich family? The one that practically owns the school and half the city? Y yeah, that one. I've seen you've... You got your expedition, expedition, <laughs> exposition down. Owen mumbled under his breath. He looked a bit uncomfortable. Hmm. Philip glanced over to the big guy, appraising him like a possible pest to be dealt with. Well, it's nice to meet you, I guess. My name is Philip Tan. Philip Tan. Hey, we're roommates. Philip's smile immediately dropped like lead. What? How do you know? 
I've lived at this academy for like seven years. Of course I have some insider information. <laughs> How old is this character? 28? And forward to it, little man. Right. Likewise. Owen turned to me with a wide grin. This guy seems a bit too excited. And what's your name, handsome? Uh, I'm Marrow. Anyway, uh, why are you climbing? Why are you trying to climb the building? Right to the point, huh? The thing, what was happening on the screen. Well, the door was locked, so I tried to reach the window and climb inside from there. Uh, maybe we just wait until someone passes by to open the door for us? You know, like normal people. I already waited like forever though, it it'll take an eternity. Waiting sounds safer than climbing windows. It's not that hard, really. I used to climb these windows all the time. There's a little ledge over there that we can use and it'll be super quick. Eh, you'll probably break the window and be in a world of pain. Look here, buddy, I'm too suave and handsome to break anything but expectations in bed. Oh, you meant that in the good way. I thought, he, I, thought, I thought he was saying, like, I disappoint people sexually. <laughs> That's why I'm only hitting on, on freshmen who are, like, seven years younger than me. Because I'm so mature. In the bad way? Probably. Only ever in the good way. Want to find out firsthand? Owen leans in close to me and gives me a wink. Um... Philip coughed behind us. Let's just find a way inside the building. I mean, you two can have your bedroom experience out here, but I won't help you when you get arrested for public indecency. We, we weren't. <laughs> Guess we'll have to save it for later. The way Philip's eyes rolled in the back of his head reminds me of a great white shark going in for the kill. What? <laughs> Is that a shorthand you just have ready all the time? Uh, that's a, that takes me a moment to process. I'm like, I, I guess, I guess I have heard sharks do that, huh? Anyway, Meryl, what do you think we should do? Let's climb the window. Why not? If one of us dies, then, well, <laughs> that'd be exciting. <laughs> But waiting here will take forever. This is the back entrance, after all. Climbing the window doesn't look too difficult, either. Window climbing it is. Welcome to my route, dumbass. <laughs> I knew you'd be reasonable, Marrow. Reasonable, he says. Hey, Philip, are you coming along, too? I, I guess so. I'm extremely susceptible to peer pressure once there's two people. Enough dilly-dally. We're as late as it is. Let's get going. I'm definitely someone who cares about tardiness. The three of us hobbled onto the ledge that Owen was climbing earlier and inched our way towards the window. Now that I'm up here, this feels like a really bad idea. The rain made every surface wet and slick. I feel like any wrong move and I'll end up slipping and bashing my head on the pavement. I feel like brick might be one of the least slippery surfaces to walk on in the rain. Specifically, what brick that is the sides of buildings and so on. Not like worn down floor. Philip, on the other hand, walked alongside us with the casual grace of a cat. He glanced at us occasionally with slight concern. Uh, are you doing okay, Meryl? You look kind of pale. Uh, you can't just say that to a white rabbit. Am I a rabbit? Uh, I mean, we are a little high up. There was a sudden click as Owen swung open the window with a wide grin. See? Way easier than waiting outside for eternity. Let's go. Owen leapt into the window head first. His leap was immediately followed by a crack and a resounding ow. You still alive in there? Yeah, perfectly fine. Nothing went wrong. Except that he broke the window lock. This thing isn't closing anytime soon. But at least we can get out of this rain. As the three of us shook the rain from our hair, I glanced around the lobby. The school is fancier than I expected. I wonder where we're supposed to go from here. 
Hmm. Orientation's probably over by now. I think we should probably find a teacher. Hey, you brats! A large, ugly rat hobbled towards us, his face scrunched up with hostility. He looked like the type of guy who'd frequently start bar fights. What do you... <laughs> what do you miscreants think you're doing? Entering the building like a bunch of criminals. Ugh. Oh. Oh, they're Dorcas. What are you men trying to do with those those tiny waists to be grabbed? That's not the that's not the reference at all. It's, it's, that's not that that was right. That's Mister Dolores to you, brat. I pressed Y again. If you say so. The man, I think, is a teacher. Runs towards me and Philip with an upturned nose. Ah. And you're Marrow and Philip, I take it, the two that missed the orientation. Yes, uh, Owen was with us too. Who would have thought that Geradia Academy's new students would be snooping in here this way? Guess I shouldn't be surprised. Actually, all the entrances were locked and we were stuck in the rain. A system glitch, I guess? No need to yell at them for something I had no control over. Mr. Dolores huffed and shook his head. Whatever. At least you folks weren't like that other kid that didn't even show up. Here, take your ID cards and unpack at your dorms. And Owen, make yourself useful be a tour guide or something. Mr. Dolores tossed the ID cards at us and stomped away. Wow, that guy was... a douche? <laughs> Sorry about the first impression, guys. This is a good school, really. They haven't kicked me out yet. <laughs> After failing to make any progress for uh, almost a decade. Dolores is such is just a jackass. I heaved a tired sigh. It hasn't even been an hour and this school's already been an exhausting experience. Shaking my head, I glanced at my ID card. Uh, I probably shouldn't have sent in a selfie as an ID photo. What was I thinking? What was wrong with that picture? <laughs> By the way, Owen, could you show us where our dorms are? Of course! And Philip, I can get some roommate bon- And Philip and I can get some roommate bonding time, too. What? Come on, buddy, it'll be a good chance to get to know each other. Owen goes to put- to put a friendly arm around Philip, but the little guy instantly stiffens. Oh? <laughs> oh, uh, I just remembered that I forgot something. I better get going. What'd you forget? Uh, I forgot. Well, time for me to leave. I'll see you guys around. Uh, I hope the fuck not. He's literally your roommate. There's no escape. You have to get used to this guy. Owen thoughtfully stared at as Philip st uh, strolled away. I yelped as Owen elbowed me playfully. <laughs> what a cute guy. Is he single? Dude, we just met. I don't know a thing about him. Please don't ask him out. Philip looked like he might, looked like he might snap. Oh, bummer. Whatever. I'm sure we'll get to know each other real well after a while. That's the only thing I think about ever. Well, anyway, I better show you the way to your dorm. By the way, why are you the one showing us around? You don't even exactly look like a tour guide. Uh, Owen started walking briskly down the hall. I struggled to keep up with his stride. It's a long story, to be honest. I've been living at this academy for like seven years. I'm pretty familiar with how things work around here, so I run errands for teachers fairly often. Seven years? Why were you at the academy for so long? I didn't hear the last time you said this. Oh boy, how do I explain this without making it awkward? Well, uh, I've got the Benjamin Button disease. <laughs> I kind of ran away from home when I was little. Family trouble and whatnot. So, uh, now I'm here. Any question of the academic variety? That sounds kind of rough. Are you doing okay? Owen waved his hand dismissively. Me? Oh, I'm perfectly fine. 
That stuff happened forever ago. I don't think much about it nowadays. Nothing but happy thoughts here. Sorry to weigh down your first day with all this heavy stuff. I glanced at Owen doubtfully. He was grinning, but a smile doesn't quite reach his eyes. Anyway, let's head off to the dorms. Introductory classes are going to start soon. Uh, let's go then. Just try and keep up. The dorm building is right... Right here. I don't know if you can call it a dorm building. Aren't you guys in a building? Like, it's one building. Because you went around to the outside and the doors were all locked to the building. And you're inside the halls, I think? There were an odd number of students this year, so you get a room all by yourself. How lucky. My own room? Sweet. Now any route I pursue, I can take them back here. Well, you better get unpacked quickly. Classes start in about ten minutes. I've got to go myself. See you around, kiddo. I set down my bags and sank into the bed, sighing at the comfort. So this is where I'll be living for the next month, huh? And also learning photography, apparently? I hope the people around here don't turn out to be complete weirdos. That Philip kid seemed nice enough. He was not nice at all. <laughs> the whole time. He was kind of doofy, though. He always looked like he was lost or something. And the Owen guy was a little too flirty, but whatever. Things could be worse. The school seemed to be a little preppy and upper class, too. I really don't fit in here at all, do I? Not that I fit in at home, either. As I sat alone in my room, I could feel my mind wander in uncomfortable places. Time to think of it. Surrounding myself with other people did a decent job of drowning out that sinking feeling that had made its home in my chest for the past few years. It felt... nice. Well, sitting here contemplating it wasn't going to help. Better head off to good old photography class now. I leapt off the bed and stretched my arms overhead with a sigh. Here goes nothing. According to this pamphlet, photography class should be somewhere around here. The school is like a maze. I hope I'm not late again. Huh? There was something on the floor. Looks like someone dropped their wallet. So his name is Sissel? He's probably another student around here. I'll hold on to it for safekeeping, I guess. The photography classroom was heavy with the smell of fresh paint. It looked like they shared a room with the rest of the art students. This place is rustling with activity. You there. Do you happen to be Marrow? I perked up. An ancient woman with graying hair and spectacles smiled at me from behind the teacher's desk. Uh, yes ma'am. I am Miss Corlys, your photography teacher for this month. Welcome. Before class starts, I'll have to make sure all students have possession of their own personal camera. I forgot that it's only a month. Imagine moving somewhere for a I, Well, I guess I, I did move, I did have to move, like leave and be on a month-long trip for geology at one point. So I guess I, I was about to say, imagine the thing I did moving somewhere for a, a month-long class. Did you bring one as assigned by the class paperwork, Mr. Marrow? What? Uh -huh. We were supposed to bring our own camera? You mean to say you don't know? No, that, no that, that means no. Did you bother reading the paperwork before coming here, Mr. Marrow? Uh... Shit. Great first impression already. No matter, we have several spares for less att attentive students such as you. Did you hear something breaking? Oh wait, it was just my self-esteem, no big deal. Miss Corlys rummaged through several cabinets before pulling out an old, faded camera. Hmm. This will do. Take this, Mr. Marrow. I expect you to take good care of it. Felt pretty old and clunky. Oops. I D-padded a little bit. Nope. Stop selecting back. Oh, the, oh it's because the joysticks are fucked up. I need to get a new controller. Heck, this thing was probably older than I am. Mm, how are they going to develop photos? 
This sounds like a more of a problem than a solution for most of what they're doing here. Like, that would go very badly for them if it genuinely was too old. Hey, isn't that the... Yeah, that's the Weddle, right? That thing's cursed! What's Miss Corley's thinking giving that haunted thing to him? They have evil cameras. They own they own an evil camera. <laughs> Nonsense. I will not have any of this haunted talk in this classroom. That story is just a baseless rumor floating about the school. Cursed? What's that supposed to mean? Uh don't don't worry about it. You'll be fine. Y yeah. Miss Quirley scowled and ignored the chatter as she directed everyone's attention towards the blackboard. Soon she began a lecture on the basics of photography, and the class settled down and started taking notes. People still shot the occasional weird look, though. How do they know their reputation of this camera, but they're in a lecture for the basics of photography, like they just started? What was all this commotion over this old thing? Hey, it's not that old. Is that me? I need a comparison. Also, I need a new controller. Stop it. Ah! Mr. Marrow, keep your voice down. Sorry. Just th this kid popped out of nowhere. Yeah, this will this will go over well. Everyone will believe you here. And the class suddenly begins whispering rampantly. See, it's got him. I knew that thing was haunted. It's the ghost, isn't it? Uh, do you see him? Mr. Marrow, let me explain something to you. I will not have any of this supernatural nonsense in this classroom. Countless other students have tried pulling the same trick you have. There is no ghost ch child haunting this camera. If I hear another word of this, expect disciplinary action for disturbing my, cl <laughs> my class. <laughs> well, <laughs> understand. What? It's probably best just to agree with her, Marrow. I don't know how to wear a belt. Huh? Uh, yes, ma'am. Good. Now sit down and take your notes. I settled back down at the desk and glared at the kid. What the hell's going on? Sorry. Probably shouldn't have startled you. Especially with old Cor uh, Corlise around. Who the hell are you? And why can't anyone else see you? Are you really a ghost? Me? Huh. You can call me... Echo. And no, I'm not a ghost. Nothing sad like that. I guess you could call me a wish. That makes no sense. And your face. Oh, you've noticed. You look just like me? Okay, I'm on, I'm on base there. Nah, I'm much more handsome, thank you very much. Not, not to mention humble. Why do you look like me, and why are you here? He's adapting well to this situation. He's also immediately not paying attention to his class again. I can't answer those questions at the moment. Great. Wait, aren't you the one that knocked- that locked the front doors this morning? Oh, you're a sharp one. Why did you do that? You made me miss the orientation and everything. Not to mention standing me outside in the rain, straining me. Uh, so that so Echo uh, trapped us outside on purpose in order to get us to meet the other two characters. The ghost fig the ghostly figure chuckled with a knowing look. If I didn't lock those doors, would you have met Philip or Owen? Well, and if I hadn't stolen Sissel's wallet, you wouldn't have met him either. Uh, we haven't met yet, actually. Echo blinked. Really. What's taking you so long? No matter. You'll bump into him sooner or later. All the threads will weave into their proper places. Why was he smiling like that? 
Uh? Oh, you can still see him, kind of. Looks like I'm out of time. I'll see you around, Marrow. Don't lose that camera. He's gone. He may be a ghost, but I really want to kick his ass. <laughs> I sighed and glanced down at the camera in my hands. A few moments of silence passed before I reluctantly hung the camera around my neck. Silence? You're in a classroom at a lecture. <laughs> Ghosts and cameras. Whatever could go wrong. Oh, no more lecture. I cannot accuse this game of having the pacing problems most furry visual novels happens at their beginning. And this, this one's just fucking going. <laughs> this one's like in a hurry. It's a, it's a bit of a break from all the games where I read for an hour and a half and we never leave the first room. Because we're, oh no, I'm wounded and I'm in bed and the wolf is taking care of me. Photography class ended not a moment too soon. Everyone rushed out to get to that to get out of that dreaded place. The other students kept their distance from me, probably still wary of the whole cursed situation. My first day at this academy is off to a great start. I yawned and fumbled through my schedule. Huh? Looks like it's lunchtime already. I can almost smell that sweet, sweet freedom. Ow! Watch it, dipshit! Oh, uh, sorry. You better be. Ugh. Where's my wallet? It's definitely that guy. The fucking... <laughs> the pelvic cut out of the, uh... The tank top that's already, sh like, covering as little as possible. The furry fantasy of tank tops that don't cover nipples because there's just too much chest. It just can't be contained. Wow, rude. The kid ignored me and strutted down the hall with contempt. This is a classic moment to wonder how how tattoos work on furries. Is it discoloration of the fur? Is the fur shaved down lo like close enough that you can see the tattoo through it? Uh, is it paint on the fur? Uh, do they actually not have fur? It's the it's an age old thing, it's, but the the, the, the uh, this, I've seen a lot of versions of it. Like uh, like Rose Fix uh, explicitly has their characters shaved down so you can see the tattoos under the fur. Uh, there's a thing called cold branding that I was thinking that I'd incorporate if I ever wrote characters, where it's like a thing they do to cattle, where they they it's like a, it's like branding but instead of a hot iron it's a super super cooled one and i guess it makes it so that the hair grows back white so you, it's like permanently damages the hair on that spot but it's like a, a interesting way of doing like furry tattoos essentially but there's also always the question of like it's possible especially like the more you look at the way certain characters are texture wise in fr the furry fandom and how other like muscle definition works and all sorts of other things you might wonder like maybe these characters are basically hairless and just happen to be the color of their fur and then they have like hairier parts here and there on like on top of their head and they're like and here the elbows and the tail but that might just be skin that would explain a lot of like the definition potentially so then that then then at that point tattoos are not like questionable at all because it's just normal ass skin tattoos the real answer and is the same answer as whenever somebody debates how facial hair or body hair works on furries is that they're cartoons the answer is that they're cartoons and they, they can just cheat the logic doesn't have to matter that's one of the fun things about children's cartoons in general too is that they'll often like have a bit every now and then like a joke that like calls into attention the impossibility of the setting and the characters and just just have a funny have a fun time with all that because it's, it's all absurd you can just draw whatever you want akin to like the even i don't know why i'm citing escher here but it's like a bit like escher's impossible rooms like if you can draw it then it doesn't matter if it doesn't make sense you drew it anyway ta-da He looked like the kind of guy with angry as his default state of mind. Seemed a bit familiar, though. Where had I seen him before? Oh, it was the kid on the wallet. His name was Sissel, I think? I reached for the wallet in my pocket, but hesitated. Should I even bother giving it to him? He was acting like a jackass. Give him the wallet. We need to see more than one pose of this guy. I sighed and pulled out the wallet out of my pocket. Jackass or not, it's still his wallet. Hey, is this yours? Huh? 
Oh, my wallet. His ears dropped, uh, drooped with embarrassment as he returned to grab it from me. Uh, thanks, kid. Vroom. He rushes back down the hall like he's in a big hurry. Not much of a talker, is he? Oh, wait, he's coming back. Uh, hmm. Sorry for calling you a dipshit earlier. It's been a bad day. It's, it's fine, don't worry about it. If you say so. Uh, well... See you around, then? Cecil made his way down the hall again. His ears were still drooping. It was quite cute. I couldn't help but laugh a little at his antics. For someone who looks so tough, he sure blushes a lot. Blushing and being pale, two more things that would you associate with not having fur. Well, Mero, you really saved him a lot of trouble. Ah! Your voice! Get out of my head! Nah, it's nice in here. Very empty and cozy. You little shit. Did you know? Sissel's the poorest student here at Gerania Academy. Obviously I did not know that. I've been here 30 seconds and met the people that you know I met. Returning his wallet probably meant a lot to him. So why did you steal his wallet from him in the first place? All things will weave into place, little man. You'll see. We're the same exact height. Oh, hey, Marrow. Nice to see you again. I jumped as Philip suddenly appeared behind me. You want to go to lunch together? I kind of want to stick with people I know. Do we know each other? Is that your standard? <laughs> I gave Philip a friendly smile. That sounds good. I can, I can do with a relaxing lunch. Let's head off to the cafeteria. Actually, I was thinking of going to this local cafe. A friend of mine recommended it to me. I heard it's really nice and cozy. Also, Owen kind of gave me an errand to run there. I have no idea where I'm going, so you'll have to lead the way. That's a great idea. Let's get lost together. tiny cafe was bustling with quiet activity. The warm smell of coffee and breakfast filled the air. It was really nice and cozy in here. Well, we're here. And we only got lost twice. Thank God for Google Maps. I told you we should have stopped and asked for directions. That's the same as giving up. Don't you have any sense of pride, Marrow? Right now, I only care about getting decent food. Haha, <laughs> well, we're both pretty hungry. What are you planning on getting? Well, there he is. Uh, hello? Welcome to Café de Cour. What can I get for you? Oh. Uh, it's, it's you again. My chest is so gargantuan and explodes from aprons as well. Uh. <laughs> Thanks for returning my wallet earlier. Uh, really, it, it meant a lot. It's, it's nice to see people being good for once. Wow, Marrow. Being a good egg on your first day? Uh, I'm just doing my best. Ugh! It's you. Huh? Oh, you're that kid who's always by the lake. You're that kid who always hangs out near that old wishing well. Exposition complete. I glanced between the two of them, a bit, a bit, a bit, bleh, a bit bewildered. <laughs> Did these two know each other? Philip chuckled before extending an inviting hand towards Sissel. Nice to finally meet you properly. I was, I was just going to stare at you for a few more decades and then die alone. <sighs> Likewise. Oh, speaking of which... Philip handed Cecil an ID card. You missed orientation earlier, didn't you? Owen asked me to give you your ID card. There was also a note attached to it. Cecil took a moment to read it before looking back to us. You guys came all the way out of here to deliver this? Thanks. Uh, by the way, uh, what, are you na what are your names? Uh, me? I'm Marrow. Well... <laughs> 
What are your names? One answer. Well, Marrow and Philip. Whoops. <laughs> Thank you. I, I appreciate it. Oh, Philip, you're Owen's roommate, right? Uh, yeah. Let me know if he ever gives you any trouble. I'll kick his ass for you. I guess they probably get IDs every year, right? I was trying to remember, like, how does he have a reputation for being uh, the poorest kid? And has he no Owen already? If he's needed to go to orientation and get an ID? But I guess uh, we did get IDs every year back in school, huh? So I'm used to adult IDs that take forever to expire, and so you're just stuck with that photo forever? Huh. <laughs> might take you up on that offer. I guess you and Owen know each other too? We've been friends for a long time. He's a good guy at heart, but he's also like really colorful. You know, as the limp wrist gesture, he's kind of, you know. <laughs> Sometimes I just want to punch him in that pretty little face of his. Anyway, this is still a cafe. Uh, what do you want to order? And don't read into that comment where I talked about my buddy's, my buddy's face. I don't want to give him a little smooch or anything. Philip and I ordered our food and sat in the back of the cafe. My stomach growled happily as I took a bite of my sandwich. He must be really hungry, huh? Today took a lot out of me. I deserve to satiate my stomach. I walked in a circle, talked to a ghost, I came here. Long day. Yeah, things have been pretty rough so far. Sissel doesn't look too happy either. Maybe he's having a rough day himself. Speaking of, how do you know Sissel? Have we two met before? Uh, sort of? I hung a, I hung about the forest around Bradley Lake fairly often when I was younger, and Sissel was always there too. We talked every now and then, but I never knew his name until now. Wait, they talked? Wait, they've interacted? And they, <laughs> they really did, the, the whole the nice to properly meet you doesn't really make any sense anymore. Yeesh, I can get to why. That's what a grumpy kid. True, but he's not a bad person, really. Damn it, give me some warning when you pop up like that. You'll get used to it. By the way, I thought you'd like to know. Sissel gave you a, a discount on your coffee. What, really? I checked the receipt and sure enough, the coffee was a dollar off. Huh, I guess, I guess wasn't as grumpy as he acted sometimes. What? Okay, that, that line needs a redo. <laughs> the guy's got a lot on his shoulders. By the way, do you want to make his day better? I smell ghostly scheming. Echo chuckled. It's nothing bad. <laughs> I was I was going to suggest, let's make his day better by ruining his life. Something horrible. Just go buy Sissel something to eat. The poor kid hasn't eaten since yesterday morning, and probably can't afford anything right now. His boss usually flocks him like a mother hen, but today has been a bit hectic with the flood of new students. Maybe she should, I don't know, fucking pay him. Uh, <laughs> it's hard to be like, oh, my boss takes care of me. I'm just starving because I can't afford food. Wait a minute. <laughs> His lunch break's coming up soon, if I remember correctly. You are either a really nice guy or the nosiest ghost in the world. <laughs> I get it all from you, little man. What? You're going to die in a car crash in seven days, and then haunt your past self for the, and live this week on a loop forever. Marrow? Huh? You were dozing off for a while. Who are you talking to? N no one, just daydreaming. Alright, if you say so. Dozing off, who are you talking to? So is he saying that all out loud? Philip didn't look convinced. After finishing our meals... Human! Human! Human shoulder on the left! I just noticed that. <laughs> Philip and I began heading back to the academy. When we got to the door, I stopped myself, feeling a nagging at the back of my mind. I just, whenever I see humans in videos, I always just think, like, why not just, like, clone tool them out? You're already altering the photo with, like, the filter or whatever you put on it. Liquify tool or oilify. Just, just delete, delete, delete the human with a clone stamp. You can just do it. 
When we got to the door, I stopped myself, feeling a feeling nagging at the back of my mind. Well, Mero, it's time to be a good person. Hey, Philip, you head back without me. There's something I gotta do. Huh? Uh, sure thing. See you back at school, then. If I don't get lost, that is. And with that, Philip left the building, leaving me alone with Sissel. I took a long, deep breath before approaching him. Hey, Sissel. Uh, what do you want? Well, uh, it's almost your lunch break, right? How about I get you a sandwich or something? My treat. What? Uh... Actually, that'd be great. Thanks. Wow, Sissel's wolfing down that sandwich like he's never eaten any, any eaten, uh, blah, never eaten before in his life. Those are gross eating noises that I will not try to imitate on Mike. <laughs> Ugh, that really hit the spot. Thanks a bunch, Mero. <laughs> you're you're welcome. Actually, I'm glad I got you lunch. It looked like you really needed it. Did I really look that hungry? I guess I should be grateful you noticed. You gotta learn to take care of yourself. Nobody should starve themselves like that. I'd love to, but it's not that easy. I, uh... I was homeless and living on the streets for a while. Things have been easier since my boss took me under his wing, but... It's been a difficult adjustment. Oh, wow. I never realized. Because we've never met, basically. But it sounds like things are getting better, right? You have a job and a place at the academy now. True, but then there's his assholes like that teacher. Dolores, was it? He's been warning everyone that I'm a crooked thug. Life's hard enough without judgmental people making things more difficult. By the way, Mero, uh, I want to thank you again. I, uh... I know I haven't been the nicest person to you so far. But you're, uh, still nice enough to help me out, so, uh... Thanks. Oh, uh... It's been my pre my pleasure. The two of us stayed at the cafe for a while, exchanging small talk. It was surprisingly enjoyable. In fact, we didn't even notice the it was time to go before Sissel's boss showed up to shoo us away. What? Shoo, shoo us away? That was a lunch break. Isn't he supposed to go back to work? After returning from the cafe, I found myself standing on the campus yet again. It was the afternoon, and thankfully there were no more classes today. No homework either, uh, either. Just a huge chunk of free time. I wonder what I should do. I know that big, strong, poor guy is kind of, sort of like an archetype of itself. Archety archetype? Fuck. Yeah. Uh, but like the... Uh, threw myself off really hard there. <laughs> it's so dumb. I'm an, I have a feud with that word at this point. Uh, but like, I... I I know a few people that like attempt to like bodybuild and so on in the furry fandom and like you see how much they post about the sheer amount of food they have to take in and they look they don't look as big as he does so I'm like I don't know if this guy's starving if he's that built I don't know if that, that works out go to the gym oh yeah well I suppose I should do something healthy for once and head to the gym honestly I didn't feel like exercising at all but at least I can pretend I'm making an effort Pretend to yourself? Who's watching? The crazy thing about going to, to college is that no one pays attention to you anymore and you just you can just slack off. The gym was surprisingly crowded at this hour. Besides a handful of people who were still working out, most were leaving as I came in. So it's not super crowded then. Oh hey, there's Owen in the corner. And he's shirtless. <gasps> The evening light shimmered across his chest as he strained against his arm press. It really puts his muscles on display. He's got a nice body, too. For a moment, we made eye contact. Owen broke into a smile and waved at me enthusiastically. 
Oh, hey there, Mero. Uh, what's the... How's your first day so far? Uh, it's been okay. A bit spoopy, though. Spoopy? Ah, uh, so you got your hands on the so-called cursed camera. I wouldn't pay too much attention to all those rumors if I was you. The camera's only been here for a few days. It's not like, it's not as old or haunted as it looks. It's only been here a few days? What? <laughs> really? Why does it look so beat up? Nobody knows. Somehow it has this massive reputation and I'm the authority on everyone's opinion of it in three days. Kind of just showed up one day in, Miss, in Mrs. Clarice's office. I figured a former student forgot about it or something. Well, that's not suspicious at, a at all. It's just a clunky camera. How bad could it be? By the way, are you here to work out or just stand there looking pretty? M me? No one's accused me of looking pretty before. <laughs> Owen laughed and gave me a flirty wink. I'm surprised. You're pretty easy on the eyes. Uh, um... Brain rebooting. Please wait. I shake my head vigorously before hopping on a nearby treadmill, doing my best to ignore Owen's laughter. As I begin a light jog, I shoot him a wry glare. Oh, shut up. You were distracting me with all that camera talk. Owen gave me an amused shrug before returning to his arm presses. He watched me with an interest as I kept jogging. I couldn't help but feel a bit self-conscious. What are you staring at? Oh, nothing. Just wondering if you go to the gym much. You have horrible running posture. Ow. Thanks for stabbing my self-esteem. I shrugged. I guess you're not wrong. I don't do this much. Just try landing on the middle of your feet. And strengthen your back and straighten your back a little. Relax your shoulders a bit too. Like this? Yeah, just like that. You put too much strain on your calves the way you were before. Uh, thanks, man. Do you come to the gym a lot? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, not really. <laughs> not a fan, honestly. <laughs> you seem to know a lot about this. Me? I guess you could say that. The gym has always been the place I'd go to relax and take my mind off things. I shot him a disbelieving face as I continued to rasp for air on the treadmill. <sighs> Relaxing, he calls it. Hey, you're just out of shape. With practice, this place could be pretty chill. Plenty of eye candy, too. Uh, if you say so. Huh. Oh, I've been running for a while now. It, f it felt like hell itself was burning through my legs. Uh, uh, huh? Looks like I forgot to bring water with me. Damn. Looks like I'll just die from dehydration here. The world could be so cruel. I think they have water at gyms. Suddenly something ice cold and wet pressed against the back of my neck. It's like the Howie scream, goddamn. <laughs> Jeez, chill out, Marrow. Just giving you a bottle of water. Gotta stay hydrated and all that. You didn't have to scare me like that. Where's the fun in that? I grabbed the water from him with contempt before gulping the whole thing down. Gah, <sighs> that felt better. I let a, out. A, bleh, I let out a long, contented sigh before slurping. Slumping to the ground in exhaustion. <laughs> Slurping to the ground. A pair of strong, warm arms crept beneath me and held me up before I could get anywhere comfortable. I glanced up and suddenly noticed how close Owen and I both were. He's currently touching you. <laughs> My head was resting on his bare chest, still glistening with sweat. It's a little gross <laughs> if, if, you don't, if you're not engaged in that. Hey. It's bad to sit right after exercising. Want to go on a little walk with me instead? Also known as exercising? I groaned and slumped against him. Ugh, why are you people so healthy? 
The two of us leisurely strolled around the campus. The setting sun shimmered brilliantly in the sky above. It was quite a beautiful scene, really. The sharp hues of orange and red really complicated Owen's fur. Say, Owen, how long have you been at the academy? You really seem to have a lived-in feel about this place. Owen has told you twice already. Do you listen to... people? <laughs> hmm... Been living here at the academy year round for about five years, I think. Wait, what happened to seven? Wait, I thought it was seven. But also, why is why is Marrow asking again? <laughs> year round. Don't you ever get homesick? Home. His face held a wry smile. My home's kinda empty. Draining Academy's my new home away from home. Granted, I haven't made made many friends here thanks to my snotty rich kid image. I do get homesick sometimes. For the people, at least. Yeah, that's the that's what people mean. I don't think people are like, man, this building, I miss it. <laughs> Did you get to visit your family sometimes? Owen felt quiet. It just bothers me a little bit that Owen put the, the hoodie back on without taking a shower. So now it's just nasty. There was a regretful and bitter look in his face. I was silent for a few moments, thinking of a way to respond before getting something caught my eye. Oh, wow! Look! Huh? Trails upon trails of bubbles floated down from the sky, decorating the crisp afternoon air with reflected hues of the setting sun. The scene was beautiful and breathtaking to behold. Ah, uh, looks like someone's blowing bubbles on our dorm roof. I... I need to take a picture of this. This is too good a chance to pass up. I don't know what my assignment is because I didn't pay attention during class because spooky ghost. I fumbled for my camera and snapped the image, smiling fondly at the resulting photo. The sunset's orange hues... Not really. Painted the photo with a dazzling display of color. Bubbles sparkled in the light like gentle floating stars. Hey, Owen? What is it? Your home really is beautiful. Yeah, it is. I'm just, I'm just like looking at these two and like, aren't their ages like... Or as I could guess, their ages like 18 and 25? It's a huge, just a huge gap, that, that young. I fell into my bed with an exhausted slump. Not slurp. Not tonight, anyway. I had been, it had been a long day. Who would have thought so much could happen? Draney Academy has a few quirks, but things have been pretty nice so far. Ghosts or not, I'm gonna make the most of my time here. I glanced around my dark room tiredly. Being around people for once felt strangely uplifting. Maybe things will start to get better after all. With a long sigh, I closed my eyes and let the tides of sleep carry me away. Repeat. Day two. Unknown entity. Look at these cards. That's neat. Oh, and those are the three characters we met already. Yeah. That art's pretty neat. Uh. Philip has chains stabbing through his body. And a gas mask, I think? Oh no, he's Christian. <laughs> We're doomed. Well, best boy's gonna be gonna be Cecil then. Womp womp. Marrow. Marrow, wake up. Uh, you always do this. Where's the mini fridge? Holy shit, it's fucking cold! Silly music's back! Good morning, Marrow. Do you sleep well? What the hell is wrong with you? You weren't waking up, and your fourth alarm went off er already. I'm just looking out for you, little man. I'm soaked! Again! I already wet the bed! And you poured it all over my crotch, too! Wait. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> You're gonna shower anyway, so why does it matter? 
Plus, you might want to find Philip before he burns down the whole building. What? <laughs> well, there's a place to end it on. Alright, if you want to check out Repeat, link in the description to the Steam page and all that. Uh, <laughs> I applaud that it at least has forward momentum. It, it is going. Apparently the ghost can pick things up. Although, honestly, it might be ambiguous. I thought the ghost... My first interpretation of the mini fridge common is that they pick things up, but the fact that it's on the crotch makes me think that he just tricked Mero into wedding himself, so I don't actually know yet. But anyway, thanks for watching like always, and if you want to see the previous episodes of the series, uh, there's a whole bunch of other Let's Tries of furry visual novels in the description in the playlist. See you guys next time. Mm -hmm.